The Arizona Cardinals had a chance to win the NFC West, and they blew it. They blew it. The Arizona <laughs> Cardinals had a chance. It was right there for them. All they had to do was beat the six-win Seahawks, and they couldn't do it. It was a loss so bad. We had morning show national media members reaching out to my co-host, Alex Clancy, just asking, you good. It's Bo, it's Alex. We're breaking down this loss, and we're starting to preview already their super wild card round matchup with the L.A. Rams. Let's get into it. It's Locked On Cardinals. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. With a chance at the division on the line, and it was there. The 49ers took care of business against the L.A. Rams in overtime. The Arizona Cardinals squandered and lost that chance. 38-30, to the Seattle Seahawks. It's Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. This podcast brought to you by OnlineGambling.com, the place to be for all the latest gambling news and tips throughout the NFC playoffs, which the Cardinals will be a part of. Visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to get the edge over the competition throughout this year's playoffs. So, I mean, when, when we start to try to dress this team thing up, and I tried to do it at halftime, I was very incorrect in doing so. I'm very, I, I, I'm, I'll admit that. But uh, the Arizona Cardinals just did not show up to play in a game that cost them the NFC West at the end of the day. You, you can't, like, before this, you could have said, hey, they, they cost themselves the chance at the division against the Lions. They cost their, their chance against the division on Christmas night. No, they cost, they legitimately cost themselves a, the chance at the division by coming out flat in this game, Alex against the Seahawks. And then once they got the momentum going in their favor, after coming out hot in the second half, they relinquished that opportunity once again. Yeah. That about covers it. Uh, what we saw on Sunday was the Cardinals taking off the first half. They didn't show up. Um, when I get on the cliff Kingsbury is not equipped to be a head coach bandwagon of my own. It's, because of the first half, because of things like that, where if you can't get your team up for a game where you could win the NFC West against a team that had nothing to play for, you are not equipped to be a head coach in the NFL. And that's what we saw. They even gave the, they gave the Cardinals offense a seven-point uh, head start, too, with, with, with the strip sack and, and scoop and score by Zach Allen. Like The fact that the Cardinals were unable to win this game at home is a testament to Cliff Kingsbury. Sure, the players helped here. AJ Green didn't have a great day. Buda Baker, as as Bo talked about on Twitter, didn't have a great day. Um, but this is the fact that you can't get excited for a game like this with your leader, who's supposed to be your head coach. I mean, I got nothing for you. I I I, I have a theory on this one, and and I'll get into it. But I I do want to kind of get into I I I. I understand and it is an indictment on the coaching staff no doubt about it but i also think it's an indictment on kyler murray and the players out there i think that kyler murray uh i didn't see what i needed to see from from the guy that has an mvp uh skill set in kyler murray and, and you know he had a fine game statistically 28 for 39 240 yards he had his 70th career touchdown pass to james connor where uh connor actually sheds a tackle from a guy that was absolutely all over the field in jordan brooks uh, did he end up with 20 tackles? He had 19 at some point, but he sheds the tackle from Jordan Brooks for his, uh, at that point, 17th touchdown of the season. He had another touchdown. It was 18 overall for James Conner, but I didn't see an inspired effort from the leader of the Arizona Cardinals in Kyler Murray. And this is not a podcast to pile on. This is not a podcast to point out all the flaws of this organization, how they could potentially be fatal at the end of the day, because we've seen such a, a rise from this team since Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray took over the reins. And, you know, after 2018, and they ripped that uh, chapter of the franchise encyclopedia out and then burned it, uh, after, you know, 2019, you have this duo come to the desert, and all they've done is improve wins, they've improved offensively, but they still have these hiccups. And they also have this resume where they don't have success at the end of the season. And it's now I think that you can you can definitively say that the Arizona Cardinals have, you know, outside of now going to the big dance, which they didn't do last year, 
they fell flat for a second consecutive season uh, at the end of the year. Yeah, they did. And this was even more, you know, uh, catastrophic is not the right word because they made the playoffs, you know, um, but being 10 and two and being world beaters. And then now what are they now? They're an yeah, offense. Six, yeah. No, I mean, no, right. I mean, like, but w- what are they? <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 w- w- what are they? Right. Give me something that you can bank on. One thing. Give me Here, one thing that you can 100% trust about this Arizona Cardinals organization. Yeah. I, I, I think what I, I can say, what you can bank on, but it, this is, you don't want a team that where the only time that they have success is when things go 100% their way. You know, you need a team that when when I've been watching the the Tom Brady series, the man in the arena and those those New England teams, they never they, they very rarely had the best talent and very rarely did things go 100 percent according to plan, no matter how smart Bill Belichick is. That's the that's just the nature of the NFL. But if you can like the most times, especially within the game. I'm not saying the Arizona Cardinals haven't faced a ton of adversity this season as far as their roster and who's healthy and who's available. But within the game, if it doesn't go 100% to script, this team doesn't seem to have the ability to scratch and claw and, and battle back. Yeah, I've been saying that all year. Yes, I agreed. I mean, it, it's like in Dallas, everything went right. Everything went right. And Every big play. I mean, they got yeah. help from the other yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I mean, every big play by the Cowboys was negated by a penalty, um, and every ball bounced the Cardinals' way, and every ball that was batted in the air didn't fall into the hands of the Dallas Cowboys. Like that was, it, it seems, it seems like after watching today, seems like more of an exception to the rule than the rule, which is is unfortunate. And th- again, this isn't piling on. This is being real about things that are happening, and with what happened against Dallas. We did erase a lot of the stuff that we talked about when there are three losses to the Rams, Lions, and Colts, respectively, you know, in a row. And then this, you're exactly where you were. You may as well have lost to the Cowboys at this point because everything is back to where we were talking about things before they played the Cowboys. Like, I, if, if they beat the Rams, we're going to have a different conversation. But if you think this Cardinals team could beat the Rams, I don't know what to say. Like, but- the way they played today... We we know how how they win. I mean, the only the only way that they win is if they throw if they have a perfect game. The only way that they win is if they if they look like they did in week four, if they look like they did in week seventeen, where they're not only you know firing in all cylinders, but they're also getting help from uh, the other team shooting itself in the foot penalty wise. Uh, the opposing quarterback not hitting on big time throws like Stafford did in week four and, and Dak did in week seventeen. Uh, and, and and look, they they have the talent to match up with anybody, uh, and, and and then some. It looks like JJ Watt could come back because he's been activated from the IR, and he could you know he could get back to practicing, and he could be back in the lineup as early as the Rams playoff matchup. But man, I mean, this is a team that's going to have to have to answer some questions on the fly. And after a seven and zero start, after a ten and two start after them really kind of taking the the grasp on the NFL world and answering a lot of the doubters, uh, you know, this is a team that that has more questions than answers. And, and I'm shocked that we're saying that right now, especially it, it's weird when you look at the statistics from this game, you would be hard pressed to, to say which team was 11 and six and which team was seven and 10. Kyler Murray f- sacked five times, uh, you know, the, the 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 Seahawks on offense, uh, Russell Wilson, three touchdown passes. He had the pick. Jalen Thompson had a big, what we thought was a game-changing pick in the second half. Uh, he was only sacked once. And, you know, like just, just the way that the lines played for the Seahawks on offense and defense and how the lines played for the Cardinals on offense and defense, you would have been, hard, you, you wouldn't have known who the playoff team was. We're just getting started here on Lockdown Cardinals, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you're following along on Twitter at Lockdown AZ Cards, at Clancy's Corner, and at Bob Rack. Coming up, let's get more into this contest. What went wrong for the Arizona Cardinals? And yeah, we are starting to look towards the postseason. They're taking on, we know who their playoff opponent is. 
and it is the LA Rams, as we've already talked about here. But first, let's talk about something good, Alex. Yeah, Bilt Bar. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fitter, eating healthier, make sure you include Bilt Bar in your plan. Bilt Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe maybe even better than a candy bar. Sometimes it is voted as such with the blind taste test that Bilt Bar has done. Bilt Bar makes it easy to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it, unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill. Gross. You want to eat healthy, but it just gets so boring by like week three you're thinking this is just not worth it where's the chocolate well built bar they're all covered in 100 chocolate most built bars contain listen to this 130 uh, calories four grams of sugar four net carbs and 17 grams of protein compare that to a candy bar which you know it, it has around 240 calories 30 grams of sugar which is more than four and dozens of net carbs here's an idea for the new year uh, go to all your secret uh, treat stashes at home, in the pantry, in the office, in the car, wherever. Throw out all the sugar and replace them with Built Bars. Okay, go to Built.com. Use promo code uh, LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com, Bo. And just in time for the playoffs, we're pumped to tell you about our new sponsor, OnlineGambling.com. It's sponsoring today's Locked On Cardinals. If you don't know already, OnlineGambling.com is a website dedicated to giving betters the edge. Throughout the playoffs, they're providing you with the best NFL tips, news, and more to help you make your bets smarter than ever. OnlineGambling.com provides you the best and most trusted experience online all day, every day, inspiring every better in the world to beat the odds. Make sure you visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL for all the latest betting news, tips, and odds to give you the edge throughout the, play throughout the playoffs. Remember, OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to make the most of this year's playoffs. Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, hanging out with you on a Monday edition of Locked on Cardinals, coming off of the Arizona Cardinals. Disappointing 38-30 to season finale loss that cost them their opportunity at winning the NFC West title with the Rams losing to the 49ers. The Niners rallying back behind the arm of Jimmy Garoppolo, more like just the ability of Debo Samuel, but behind Jimmy G making enough plays for that team to overcome a 17-0 uh just early deficit, the Arizona Cardinals blow their chance against the Seattle Seahawks, which I, I just think that this Cardinals team played poorly in all three phases. I mean, you talk about the offense being a no-show in the first half. The defense kind of reverting back as far as its inability to take down opposing ball carriers. Rashad Penny had 190 yards on the ground, which is absurd. Um, and then you had the big play on special teams where the Arizona Cardinals, uh, they, they just blew a punt attempt uh, where Andy Lee put, uh, he fumbles, or he didn't fumble. It was just, he, he was going to get blocked. It was going to be a block punt, and so he holds off and tries to make a play, and next thing you know, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks offense are taking over in the Cardinals' territory. In a, was it a 20-24? It was a 24-24 game at that time, and the, the Seahawks take the lead and don't look back. Yeah, uh, it was the run defense. I, I think that's probably the biggest one. Um, the last two first-round picks, Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons, are nowhere to be found. Isaiah Simmons had a couple flash plays today. Um, I the majority of the time was seeing Zayvon Collins number twenty-five with you know the, the back plate with his uh, with his last name, him running after somebody that's already run past him. Uh, this is what happens when you know plans don't come you know come to form when you have two players that are injured, everything falls apart. That's not how a defense is supposed to be built. That's how, not how a roster is supposed to be built. When everything's going well, when everybody's healthy, things are fine. That doesn't happen in the NFL. This is where you have the best rosters, the deepest rosters, the best schemes, and the Cardinals just completely didn't today. Jalen Thompson had the pick almost uh, almost six. Um, Buda Baker didn't play great. Um, he doesn't have to be an all – he can't be an all pro. He's a human being. You know, he has he, him covering up for the for the shortcomings of the linebacking core. They can't tackle and can't stop the run. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, the run defense has been an absolute atrocity. And the fact that they have Sony Michelle, Cam Akers, and I don't know if Daryl Henderson will be back, but they could run the ball 50 times against this defense, you know, with the, the Rams can. So I don't yeah. know, man. Like, it's just, it's just frustrating. 
Yeah, I, I do think that uh, as far as Buda Baker, he, he whiffed on Rashad Penny on the big touchdown run that he had. Buda Baker had probably his worst game of the 2021-2022 season. Um, Jalen Thompson, probably the only guy on that defense that really can hang his head high after that performance. But the the lack, and we talked about it, a broken record in the offseason about the, the, the defensive secondary. I mean, you, you talk. You, you mentioned the two guys that are absent. Obviously, Robert Alford, who's on the IR. You got Marco Wilson, who's dealing with the injury. Uh, and you had Kevin Peterson bow out of that game due to an injury early in the game. Was it a concussion, I think, for Peterson? So he was done early. When you talk about Isaiah Simmons, I mean, he was a guy that was pretty much put in a position to play a position he doesn't play. Sure, he can, he can be a Swiss Army knife and play a little slot corner, but the fact that you were seeing his name playing so often is because he had to play at a just necessity play cornerback. And that's just how, how do you set yourself up that, uh, you know, as far as Vance Joseph goes, he, he had a, was a failure as, as a head coach because he didn't have a quarterback. Uh, he was a, and he's a, he's going to struggle as a defensive coordinator where he still struggles as a defensive coordinator is designing defenses to to cover Tyler Lockett for God's sake like <laughs> he, I mean he's putting the, the guy they just elevated borders from the practice squad who was wearing 21 out there and that guy was just beaten up uh, all game long I mean it's just I, you know I don't it's he doesn't the personnel is a, is a big time problem but you know I, I don't know what they're doing out there as far as uh, they're not setting themselves up for any kind of success on the defensive side of the football I mean it, 38 points is a lot I know it was aided by uh, the special teams snafu, but still, that's a ton of points that they surrendered on Sunday. Not enough, and it's it's not going to be enough. I don't care if you're playing the Cowboys in the first round, the Rams in the first round, any all the teams that are left in the big dance, Alex, they can all play offense. They can all play big boy offense, and this defense has some serious, serious things to figure out the next couple days. Yeah, you know, and it's it's hard not to pile on here with Steve Kimes' inability to, you know, field a, a total roster. Like the fact that you're relying on a fourth round draft pick and Robert Alford to stay healthy, who hasn't been played in the first two years in an Arizona Cardinals uniform, and moving Byron Murphy outside to be the CB one when he hadn't ever played it, um, you know that. When somebody gets injured, the fact that Marco Wilson is the reason why the secondary is falling apart baffles me. And this and 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 drafting Zayvon Collins and moving him inside and Isaiah Simmons still not really seemingly having a role on this team. Like I'll tell you what, you give Bill Belichick Isaiah Simmons, he's a Pro Bowler. You know, like it's it's difficult to just. This is where the Groundhog Day kind of comes back into play, where all the weaknesses are kind of exposed, and if everything doesn't go perfectly, the Cardinals aren't going to win. And if there's you know the first sign of adversity, but you know what, a lot of players are injured. Hopefully. I mean, even J.J. Watt, like, I can I can see it now. J.J. Watt gave it a valiant effort, but he's nowhere near where he is when he's healthy. You know, I can see it now. I mean, that's, that's you know, he gave a good effort. That's what the, well, at least the Cardinals made the playoffs. I've been saying this for weeks. People are happy that the Cardinals are just going to make the playoffs, and they get upset when people actually look at game film and say, you know what, this team ain't ready for the playoffs yet. And we're seeing it more and more every week. But, you know, if you're happy they're in the playoffs, cool. You got your wish. I mean, you should be. I mean, you, you know yeah. what this team, and we're, we're, I think where really the frustration lies is is that you know what this team is capable of. You you know what what they can do when when they've got a, a a good game plan and they're executing. I mean, that's that's the that's the biggest thing. I mean, and that's 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 why the NFL is so great. That's why people follow week in and week out because you don't know what's gonna gonna happen necessarily. I mean, a lot of people were starting to pencil in the Colts to the Super Bowl. How's that going? Yes. I mean, but he, but here's the also the, the other re- part of that reality is outside of the Colts and probably outside of uh, the Saints, the Arizona Cardinals fan base should probably be the third most disappointed in, in the NFL right now because of what they what they relinquished on Sunday. And that was the NFC West title. And now they got to go on the road and they got to take on a team in, in, in the in the Rams that aren't playing their best football, but they're playing better football than the Cardinals who have dropped four or five going into the big dance. How do we get here? You know, just how do we get here? Just this is what we talked about. This is exactly where we were last year, but the Cardinals make the playoffs this year because other there's more bad teams in the NFL this year than there were last year. You know, like I I don't know. But they, I, I don't know. You have to give credit to where they were earlier this season. They just aren't there anymore. 
Right, because they cruised the last half of the season, it looked like, compared to where they were in the first half. I mean, the offense, the the fact of the matter of all of this is the NFL caught up to the Cardinals, and the Cardinals, again, cannot adjust and have a new game plan. Yes. Across the board, the NFL Correct. caught up, and the Cardinals have not been able to you know, maneuver around it. Correct. And as far as the... Uh... The depth that we thought that they had is it was is not where we thought it was. As far as you know, well, it they, is what we thought it was. Well, they, they were, we were surprised. Survive. They were able to survive and they were able to win some games, but at the end of the day, it, it's fallen short. And you can see where they have flaws, where they have fatal flaws, especially when it comes to uh, a one and done winner go home scenario. And that's what we're going to see come next week. Let's start to look at that a little bit. The Rams, the Cardinals, two teams that lost on Sunday. But the Rams, they, you know, you could say, you can make your case that the Rams are backing into the postseason as, postseason as well. It's one in one as far as the season series goes. But a lot of people give them the edge early on to that Rams team. Let's start to get into it a little bit here on Locked On Cardinals. It's Bo and it's Alex. And hey, Cardinals fans, here's an incredible app for everyone who buys gas that they need to know about. It's Get Upside. Our listeners are making up of about 25 cents of per gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store, Google Play right now. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. And get a bonus $0.25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's $0.50 cents cash back on your first fill-up. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back by getting GetUpside. The, the app in the Google Play or, uh, of course, the Apple Store. Just download the app for free. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. Get $0.50 cents per gallon cash back your first tank. Some people who drive a lot, they're making upwards of $200, $300 a month. And there's no catch. The cash back, it's added right to your account. You can cash out anytime in your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card for Amazon or other brands. Just download for free the free GetUpside app and use the promo code TOUCHDOWN and uh, get that 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That's code TOUCHDOWN. Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen all season long. The Arizona Cardinals have one more game at least they're taking on the Los Angeles Rams. This is a four versus five matchup. The NFC West for the pretty much the entire 2021 season was the premier division in the NFL. And then you've got your two division winners backing in. The Niners sneak into the playoffs. They win the game that they needed to win. And they uh, they put themselves in the postseason. They get themselves in the big dance with a dramatic win in overtime. They're the sixth seed. The Philadelphia Eagles are the seventh seed. The Packers, of course, the number one overall seed in the NFC. Uh, they're the one seed. Tampa Bay slides up to two. Dallas goes to three. And the Rams at four. So Arizona Cardinals need to go on the road and for the second time in this campaign. Take care of business against the Rams, but you know they've, they've got a big issue as far as they're going to have to cover Cooper Cup. And as you said, Cam Akers is getting healthier and healthier. He's coming back. I don't know how big of a, of a you know, it's more going to be the Sony Michelle kind of show still. <laughs> but, you know, Matthew Stafford has six interceptions in his last three games. But like, tell me if you've heard this one before. Rams quarterback gets back on track against the Arizona Cardinals. It just kind of seems like that's been the case since Sean McVay took over the reins there in L.A. Playoffs are about game plan, man. Yeah. Like it's about game plan and being able to adapt. And you know, Sean McVay has proven that he can. Cliff Kingsbury hasn't yet. That doesn't mean that the Cardinals are going to lose one hundred percent. I think they have, they have a fighting shot. I mean, it's not like you know they're it's not like they're playing Colt McCoy against against the Rams. They like the pass rush has to be there and they have to be able to stop the run. Otherwise, it's going to be a long day at SoFi Stadium for the Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals had one sack against Russell Wilson, and that's not enough. I mean, that's we we know what the blueprint looks like to stop Russell Wilson, uh, to keep him from cooking, as people hate to say, don't let you know, Russ cook. Uh, to to ruin that, you have to get to the quarterback. You have to get him uncomfortable. And I think Russ did a really good job in making plays. Sure, when he was under pressure, but the Arizona Cardinals need to do a better job in getting opposing quarterback on the on the turf. Uh, than they did on Sunday. J.J. Watt certainly helps that. Uh, he certainly helps as far as the rush defense that surrendered all the yards that they did on Sunday to Rashad Penny, 190 yards, 202 overall for the Seahawks. Um, 
you know, and, and we know what it, what it takes to make Matthew Stafford look pedestrian. He did again on Sunday against the Niners. It's just, uh, you, you know what you have to do to win a football game. It's just the Arizona Cardinals haven't been able to do it for the better part of what two months now. Yeah. Um, so the safety net is completely gone now. It slowly started to dwindle when they're on the they're doing their high wire act, and uh, we'll see. One game, one game, and the thing is, they have a player the caliber of Kyler Murray. He just needs to to play like it. Like he has a chance to capture a national audience and, and just dazzle all these people. Like, and he's yet to really do that on a national stage, and that's kind of di- that. that and that's not kind of that's disappointing. Like. I know that he played well against Dallas, but like he didn't do anything spectacular. Like this is the the reason you take the the chance in in Kyler Murray and drafting him number one overall. You know, inexplicably jumping off of a, a, fr- a first round quarterback from the previous season and a guy that's you know a non traditional size quarterback played baseball. All the stuff that that goes into Kyler Murray. The reason you take the chance is because of what his what he's capable of, and we just haven't seen him tap into that and. There's no better time than against the LA Rams in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, I mean it would, it would be that and, and then some, you know, because it's again it's in LA. The Cardinal like Rams fans aren't the most rabid. There's a lot of things to do in LA, you know. So I mean yeah. the Cardinals, the Cardinals are going to travel deep. I'm sure the Bird Gang's going to travel deep, and um, it could be worse. I mean they they could be out of the playoffs after starting seven and zero. So I guess there's that, but. You know, there's just not a whole lot to rest your laurels on after what we saw Sunday Sunday afternoon. That's all. I mean, this and this is just we're recording this right after the game, mm-hmm. so you know I'm sure calmer heads will prevail a little bit when we record our, our our Tuesday podcast. But right now, find me a bright spot. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is completely like uh, if the glass is half full, it's got a fly in it, and it's maybe got some <laughs> other gunk in it uh it, it, it's that this team has done a good job in kind of rebounding and, and refocusing itself but at the same token like you you can't we know that the on off sh- switch it it does it doesn't exist for a team like the cardinals it it, it exists for michael jordan and in the all-time <laughs> greats it doesn't exist for them it they, they don't have the luxury of that uh let me ask you this because I, this is what i thought w- did cliff kingsbury and the cardinals did they suffer from you know, the back and forth nature of, you know, following the opposing, the out of town scoreboard and then really not knowing like they, if they came out there with the, with the mindset, Hey, we need to go out there and win this game no matter what. And they didn't let all the other variables get into it, but they did. I really feel like they didn't know, okay, the Rams are up 17, nothing. What are we doing? Let's just take our foot off the gas and, and, just collect ourselves where you know we're facing the Dallas Cowboys in the first round. And like so many things changed just throughout that game and they let it completely affect them the entire way. Then don't start Kyler Murray. Very simple. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to punt on the game, don't start Kyler Murray and start the backups. That's a, like, like I, the question I'm not saying that your question is a terrible excuse. If that were the reason that would be a terrible excuse. Sit everybody. If that's the case. I, I just uh, in a, it's not an excuse and it's more of an indictment on on the on the Cardinals as an organization. I just think that you know they're looking at the out of town scoreboard. They're seeing the Rams are up seventeen nothing. They think that that the Niners have no chance of winning. And you see the, uh, the, how the offense was playing at that time. It just wasn't moving the football. Uh, it did have one drive where they they ended up cash a ten play drive where they got a field goal. But it just was they they were they were they were absent from the first half. They were missing so. I, I don't know. And then they come out with a fire when the Niners get back into the game and then they completely just fall by the wayside. Uh, regardless, inexcusable loss for the Arizona Cardinals. They now have to go on the road and take on the Rams. I thought that obviously the, the Cowboys was a better setup where a team that they've beaten. It's a place where uh, both Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury have had success. They're 2-0 and in that building. That's not happening. Arizona Cardinals are taking on the Rams uh, as the fifth seed. Taking on the fourth seed in the uh, in the NFL playoffs. Uh, thank you so much for making this uh, podcast the first listen each and every day during the regular season. It's been a fantastic, regardless of how it finished, uh, regular season for the Arizona Cardinals. Thank you so much for everybody that subscribed. Thank you for so much for everybody that chimes in on social media at Lockdown Easy Cards on Twitter, on Facebook. 
Uh, we're just uh, completely grateful to, to everybody out there that makes this podcast uh, uh, so fun. And this team is still one of the most interesting teams as far as a case study goes, teams in the in the NFL. And it's going to continue to be that because the conversation is just getting started. It's Monday. we got a full week of shows. And I think we're going to try to take a, a recently retired Rams podcaster out of retirement and uh, get him on, on the show and, and, and break down this game. Uh, but anything else to kind of wrap up this conversation about Sunday's loss to Russell Wilson and crew? <sighs> nope. Yeah, I, do, I, will say, I will say, and I'll say it because uh, – Alex, for whatever reason, will bring it up. Is Kay Adams hit him up on Twitter? Was basically like, "What did she say to you? You good? Uh, pretty much." Yeah, because she Twitter? knows that I'm that I'm on the I'm not a fan of Cliff Kingsbury train yeah. and uh, little 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 fun friendly troll job is you know yeah. it's fine on a Sunday. I'm I'm very used to it with uh, the trolling that I give to people, so it's definitely uh, definitely warranted. It's checking in on you. Just a wellness check from class case of emotion. Good morning football host Kay Adams. We we appreciate that. All right, we will talk to you again on Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for anytime we drop a video. We got great content coming all postseason long here on Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.